This is Yamaha's entry-level soundbar, the YAS-152. At 300 bucks, it offers some features that the competition doesn't. Let's take a closer look. First, what's in the box? Well, you get a manual, of course. Yamaha also provides a remote control, a four-foot-long optical digital cable, and a mounting template. First, let's start with the good aspects of this soundbar, which, interestingly enough, take place on the back of the unit. This long strip of clear, sort of lined-looking stuff, that's an infrared repeater. So if you cover up the infrared eye on your TV, the soundbar will actually repeat whatever you shoot at it out the back. That way you can still control your television. That's a pretty slick feature. Don't see that very often. Also, this thing is equipped with a pretty healthy selection of inputs and a subwoofer output. There's an optical input, a coaxial input, uh, something for your portable device, an analog input, and then you can run a separate subwoofer if you really want to. Now, if I was shopping for this thing, the first thing I would notice is that it's really wide. And despite its width, it only has two drivers. There's one on the left, and then all the way over on the other side, you've got another one on the right. So what's all that dead space for? Well, actually, that is breathing room for the system subwoofer. And that's really the main appeal of this soundbar, is that it can provide a lot of bass without a separate subwoofer sitting around. And that bass is pretty considerable. We tested this soundbar against a couple of others in its price class, and it hung in there just as well as those that had separate subwoofers. Unfortunately, that ends the list of the good attributes of this soundbar. It's kind of downhill from there. While the bass is excellent, the treble and the mid-range just isn't. We felt like the treble was too light. It didn't add enough crispness to the sound. And the mid-range was sort of shrouded. All the dialogue that we heard sounded muffled, and it just didn't come through. And even though there's a good amount of stereo separation from the speakers, what we didn't get was a good center image. One other annoyance is the fact that there's no display on the front. All you get is a bunch of old school looking green LEDs. So at the end of the day, we have trouble recommending this soundbar. Yeah, it's got some cool features to it, but the problem is the performance just isn't there. There's too many other competing soundbars that offer better sound quality for the same price.